Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike. Today we're going to discuss rest periods for alactic anaerobic intervals. So, what was the key characteristic of lactic anaerobic intervals? Do you remember? It's, it's this incomplete recovery, right? It's this accumulation of fatigue. So with alactic anaerobic intervals, my, I'm not relying on that pyruvate to lactate conversion, right? Alactic, it means without lactate. So I need to have adequate recovery. And this is where something like uh, those 10 seconds on, 50 seconds off intervals really come into play. You can only do that for so long. And then either your, your work intensity has to plummet because you can't fully recover during those 50 seconds, or you start to really tap into that lactic system. And, and again, your work intensity is going to really plummet. And you won't be able to, you just won't be able to keep going. Um, 10 seconds on, 50 seconds off is a big thing here. Now, the other, the key characteristics, okay, let's, let's take a step back. So key characteristic of lactic anaerobic training intervals is incomplete recovery. So for alactic anaerobic intervals, the key characteristic is complete or mostly complete recovery. OK, the idea is to only stress that alactic system. So I need to make sure that I'm getting the the uh, the fully rephosphorylated creatine so that I can maximize my phosphagen system, my alactic anaerobic energy system so that I can put phosphates on ADPs and make ATP really, really quickly in just that one quick step like we talked about before in our alactic anaerobic energy system video. Um, so um, key characteristic is nearly complete fatigue, but it's also maximal intensity. I can't really like we can talk about the rest period here, um, but it's not a lactic anaerobic if your intensity isn't really, really high and if your work period isn't really, really short relative to your uh, rest period. So now if uh, our like primary example that I like to think about, then pretty much the only one that I use is 10 seconds on, 50 seconds off. You can kind of tweak that. You can go up as high as 12 seconds for your work, maybe even 15 if you really want them to really start fatiguing. Um, I think you're going to see power decrement, a lot of power decrement if you do it that way, though. Um, and you can go as low as, you know, whatever you want. It could just be like you do a jump every five seconds. Like that is an alactic work period with an aerobic rest period. Um, yes, that is maybe another major point to say. Every alactic interval, work, so if it's an alactic interval, the work period is alactic, but the rest period has to be aerobic. That, yes, you need to remember that. If for an alactic interval, the work period is alactic, anaerobic, but the rest period is aerobic. It requires oxygen. So that aerobic system comes in to kind of save the day, clear out the byproducts, make sure everything's ready to go for the next round. So let's give another example. Um, so we talked about the repeated jumps. We talked about 10 to 50. Um, what about something shorter? So let's maybe cut them in half. Let's do maybe five or six seconds of work. And then let's do 30 seconds of rest. So I like 630. That, that's kind of a really good interval for somebody who plays American football because most plays last about six seconds and most plays have about 30 seconds between them. So that tends to work really well. Uh, if you're going to have somebody who has to play the whole game, then, you know, maybe offense and defense, then you can use that as a way to start to not to allude too far into the future, into a video that we're planning to do here. Um, but you can use that diagnosis as a way to make sports specific training calls. Hopefully that helps. 
Uh, just remember, when you're doing alactic anaerobic intervals, you have to try really hard. You have to make sure you're recovering after all of your, your work there. And then uh, your rest period has to be super aerobic.